Now let me get to the good stuff to have before lunch. How many of you out there, and I don't think you better raise your hand because, what, what is it? Uh, I haven't done this in a while, but uh, I might have to arrest anybody who raises their hand. So let's not do that. How many of you sell, provide, furnish, contract, arrange, or advertise that you can arrange or may arrange wholesale or retail air or sea transportation separately or in conjunction with your other services? You in-house planners, and this is really bad. There's some good news and bad news for this thing today. If you in-house planners in California are selling to a spouse, that's not that you're getting any commission on it, but if the employee gets to go and you are making the arrangements for the spouse or companion, are you telling that companion you can, have, may, or will assist with air or sea transportation if that's involved? The answer is yes under the state of California's law. Yesterday I got a compromise uh, from the state which helps us. Uh, remember I talked about you bringing goods to San Francisco and using the red and white fleet or horn blower or blue and gold fleet. That was considered air and sea. And I really got them to realize yesterday, they said, well, not that type of an excursion, get on the ship, don't get off, and get back. But if you're doing a convention down in LA, you're sending them over to Coronado and they're getting off and walking around, it's the Attorney General's position that you are a seller of travel, you have to register with the state, you have to have a CSD California seller travel number on every piece of paper you use. Oh my goodness, not to you too, yeah. I didn't like the law. I wrote the original law years ago. There were so many loopholes that nobody was ever convicted. One guy pled guilty or something. It was meant to protect the agents. Yeah, it had some consumer stuff in it. But this new law that was pushed by ACTS, the American Society of Travel Agents, is devastating. Of course, you can't really comply with it. It's so tough. You have to give such wording if you do any of these other things. Now, most of you, like Loretta, she doesn't touch this other stuff. Mm -hmm. So one of these days she's going to have a group, and one of these days they're going to want some air excursions in Vegas, and they're going to have the helicopter tours and the Grand Canyon tours, and it goes on. And at that point, you better know what that law is. And where does it come up? You're competing, you individuals out there, you meeting planners that are you know, have your competitors in here and you're both competing with a major company for the business, and you just casually mention to them, uh, Loretta, you know that uh, John's uh, meeting planner service over there is an illegal operation, not registered where I am, and therefore your whole group could be enjoined because they can't do anything for 10 days after they register. Did you know that? Oh, no, I didn't know that. Maybe I'll go with you. Uh, competitors are using it in the rest of the travel industry. And the Attorney General is using this more and more. Why? Because they're getting money for it. It's a fundraiser. Company last year, not one of my clients, fortunately, had a $1 million fine. Besides the fact that it's criminal not to register, paid at the $1 million fine, heard everything, you know, threw it up, the statistics of it. Now they've got money, they, they've got more investigators, and they have this situation where if you're not registered, if you don't see a CST number after something, it can be a criminal violation. And whether you want to do it or not, all I'm saying is it's out there, try not to ignore it. On my website, uh, travelwall, www.travelwall, one word, two L's, dot com, has additional information on it if you think that's what you're doing. But how many of you in house people do not make the reservation for spouses? You don't. You, of course you do. Fine. And the Attorney General thinks you should be registered there.
So why don't we do this? Got a whole bunch, like Loretta and I are both teachers, so we have at least eight hours of material. Uh, but we want to hear from you. We want to see what's bothering you. Uh, while we've got his hands on how, let's try to answer the type of issues you have. Gentlemen. I got a quick question on the page on this last page. Yes. So basically, if you're going to say like wire and things like that, I arrange to do a helicopter tour. And I do it as a planner. If I don't have this, so you're really I can get in trouble for that. You can if you do it to a California. There's a different block wide, but if you're selling to a California, you've got a California company that's going over. It. That's what it means. California only says you cannot tell a California that you can get on a inner island uh, hot food. But if I, if I go through a DMC, I'm fine. If he uses a DMC, oh. you do that. You're using common sense, please. The first, first thing in my speech is you're in the travel industry. Let us recognize common sense is on hold as long as uh, I'm talking to you today. They may be registered. But you are telling the Californian you can't have made or will assist with their receipt. All the state cares is if the other person is advertising over here, and they are because they got you to go with them, that they have to register too. I think the law is illegal. I think it's unconstitutional. But I am defending major supermarkets, hundreds and hundreds of chains, uh, drugstore chains, who have the audacity to hand out a coupon if you lost $300 worth of toilet paper or whatever you buy in the market that you have to be registered. And you'll see markets with CFP companies which they show. So if you're telling a Californian you can do this, I'm against the law, I hope it isn't there, are the court against it, ask the court for it, but you're illegal. And I didn't want to make my planners, my agents, my independent contractors, my pseudos out there are criminals. And that's what's happening. I'm sorry to say. Well, I, let me tell my say again on this because this is new to me also. And I, I think it's interesting, even though it's kind of a diversion of what our topic of hotel contracts and negotiations is, uh, it's always enlightening to me as a meeting planner to be aware of new things that are out there. And I, I'm sort of a wait and see stance on this to say, well, let me see if, if we see other meeting planners. I can see traveling because one of the problems with meeting planners, we don't, we're not in a very clearly defined box. You know, traveling is in a very clearly defined box. This is affecting the travel industry, but as you know, it could leap over to us and to our industry. And as the law is stated that way, kind of like, yeah, this is something we should be aware of. It's certainly in our eyes. I, have, I personally haven't seen a lot of cases out there for meeting planners, but I'm also. I, I might attend them out to, to look for it, to see, uh oh, is this something we need to be concerned I mean, about? We may want to have uh, our eyes open about it. Do you make a distinction then between the, the liability of a corporate meeting planner who is employed by a corporation to do the planning and to do the air travel versus an independent? Yes, and that's the same Our question goal. I have. Because um, no. one of the questions I asked um, Alexander was, wait a minute, sometimes it's not the eight planners doing this stuff. Sometimes it's, you know, it's the secretary, yeah. the boss says, the secretary wants to do this for the meeting for the group, and she does it. She's sure she's calling up the DMC company and making these arrangements. And yeah. then, fortunately, you're relying on another theory of law, employee versus independent contractor. As long as you're an employee and you're not sexually harassing or going into those areas where maybe you have some more responsibility, the employer under what is known as responding and superior, the superior person is responsible, <coughs> is responsible, and the company gets it. Because the attorney general doesn't want you, with all the reference, you know, I don't know how much money you have, but I think if you're in-house, you're certainly less <laughs> than what they are, and they want the big ones. That's why they get the million dollar fine. I, on a weekly basis, <coughs> have the same conversation with attorneys from all over the world. They'll get an internet company telling a Californian that they can produce travel. Hello, 
airlines and cruise lines are exempt, but any tour operator, any destination, you know, ground operator, any supplier, and then they prosecute them. And I'll get calls saying, well, that's unconstitutional. I'll say, yes, it is. Uh, it's a long-arm statute. It's Sixth Amendment interfering with commerce. But do you want to fight it, or do you want to have me get you out of it as cheap as I can? And that's a big problem. I, I think it should be repealed, but it's just been renewed because it's a money maker for the state. And every now and then, somebody goes broke, and they say, oh, you know, we need more laws to protect, you know, against agents and planners and stuff. But we've got laws, criminal laws.